Hello and welcome to Firestorm Games. In this video we're going to be looking at the Flames of War 4th edition starter, which is of course the Battle for Al Alamein. Now this features the British and German forces facing off against each other. If I flip the box over, we can see the contents more clearly. So we get a Panzer IV tank, a Panzer III tank, a Plastic Grant tank and two Plastic Crusader tanks. We also get some Commander Sprues. We get a mini rulebook, a starter rulebook, terrain cards, dice and unit cards as well. So let's open up this box and take a look at the contents inside. So first things first, we have the starter booklet. Now this begins by showing you how to assemble your tanks. Now unfortunately these diagrams don't actually have any numberings on them, so you don't know exactly which components on the sprues is where you should put where, but it's probably quite self-explanatory. The diagrams are quite clear, so I'm sure they'll probably be quite easy to put together. It also has the stack cards for each of the vehicles listed, so you know exactly which tank is which. And then we actually move on to learning the game of Flames of War itself. Now we actually get introduced on how to play the rules step by step, so it just begins with the movement step, it shows you shooting step, and then kind of introduces a few more um, rules and mechanics as well. Everything's very uh, straightforward, it guides you through everything nicely, so if you've never played Flames of War before, you can get started with this game pretty quickly. Also has a few starter missions as well, so once you've completed the first mission, you can kind of get some more practice, get more familiar with the rules by playing these as well. On the back page here we have some next steps, so you can uh, go for Rommel's Africa Corps or you can go for Monty's Desert Rats and you've got a couple of sets that you can expand out into. So that's the starter set looked at, let's look at the mini rulebook. Next up we have the miniature rulebook. Now this is for Flames of War 4th edition. Unfortunately I don't know enough about the previous editions to be able to point out what's new in the 4th edition but I can at least show you the rulebook itself. Now we start off with the quick start section. This is similar to what we've already seen in the starter rules but as well as kind of going through the basic phases and the core mechanics it also introduces a few things such as uh, cover for infantry squads that aren't actually featured in the star set but when you want to expand these will prove very useful indeed. From there we get some background about World War II, particularly this mid-war period that this booklet focuses on, around about 1942 to 43. And then we actually start going into some of the more advanced, or the, the rules you'll be using when you actually start to get into the game a little bit more. So we have things like scenery, how to have command tanks, things like that, uh, how you can seal by scenery. And then we move on to actually building up your own um, forces as well. So there isn't actually much in the way of special rules for any other nations other than Germany and Britain, but they are listed in here. I'm sure you can probably get some special rules from other sources as well. Also in the back here we have some more scenarios that you can recreate using your own forces once you've finished with the starter rules as well. Overall the booklet is very nice. It has a summary page and also a glossary as well, which uh, a lot of books actually don't have. So it's very it's great to see that we've actually seen them in here. Uh, overall, yeah, the booklet's nice. It's full coloured, some nice uh, artwork and also some photography in there. Photography is used extensively to explain some of the mechanics of the game. It's generally easier for me, especially um, as a new player, to kind of read through here and figure out what's going on, especially if you've got some um, in game examples to look at. So that's the rule book looks at. Let's move on to the stack cards. Here we have the stack cards. Now we have one for the German player and one for the British player, and these basically just explain you the different types of movement orders that you can um, order your troops to do. So it's a nice little reference point that you can have to hand. Next up we have the stack cards themselves. Now we have one for the Grant, we have a Crusader 2 and a Crusader 3 card, and we also have a Panzer 4 card a Panzer III and a Panzer III up armoured card as well. Now these are, cards are pretty much the same but I'll just focus on the Crusader here. So we have all the stats for the actual tank listed on this card. You don't need to go flicking through another rule book to find out exactly what they are. You can basically have one of these for each of the troops or tanks that you've got in your force, have them in front of you and know exactly what uh, sections you've got there. Now these also have um, a kind of a nice laminated feel to them as well, so they're probably quite sturdy and quite resilient to damage. You know, all the stats are listed in here, so we've got the weapons, we've got the range, uh, the different stats based on the tank itself, we've got movement, we've got uh, armor values for the front, side, rear and top, and lots of different uh, information, especially on the back here, we've actually got the size of the troop itself and as well as uh, the points, costs and special rules also. It's nice to have these cards because, like I said, it can be quite frustrating when you've got to flick through a rule book to find out exactly what your stat unit stats are. So having these handy cards, uh, to me, is a really great improvement over having just rules printed in a booklet. So that's the cards looked at, let's move on to some of the card scenery that we get in this set. 
Next up we have dice, card scenery and some tokens as well. Now we get six dice all together. We get three green for the British player and three grey for the German player. Very simple and straightforward there. We also get some card stock scenery as well. Now these are basically just on this kind of cardboard sprue, you just pop them out like so, place them on your table and you've got an instant building. The card is actually quite thick and durable and the printing is quite high quality as well. We also get some tokens, so we've got two ace tokens, uh, two pin markers for the Germans and three pin markers for the British as well. On the other actual sheet we also get a couple more buildings, a couple of walls and also two objective tokens as well. Now these scenery, uh, card sceneries are really a good idea in fact because it, you don't actually have to have any scenery built, you can get started with the game straight away, pretty much build your tanks, pop these down on a playing surface and you're away. You can start playing straight away. You don't actually get a battle mat in the set, which is uh, strange because a lot of games do tend to come with maybe paper battle mats, but it's not a big deal because having just some sort of scenery on a flat surface will suffice. So that's the cardstock and dice looked at. Let's move on to some of the miniatures themselves. So here we have the first brew, and this is for the Panzer III. Overall, very nice kit indeed. It's obviously plastic and multi-part. A lot of the main sections come in single pieces, so the track sections, if I just flip these over, you can see uh, all the road wheels and the actual tracks are attached to these single side panels. We've got the, um, the undercarriage and actually the top hull. The turret itself is detailed here. We actually get a few turret options on here. We get a 7.5mm uh, cannon, a long 5cm sorry, a long 50mm uh, cannon and a short 50mm cannon as well. So you get a couple of options on the sprue. You can see them all down at the bottom here. So quite nice uh, variants and these variants are also listed on the stack card. So depending on what options you want to go for, you're pretty much kitted out on these sprues. So that's the Panzer III. Let's move on to the Panzer IV. And here we have the Panzer IV. Now this is much like the Panzer III in its composition on the sprue. Again, multi-part plastic, and we also have a few main components as well. So you can see here we've got all the tracks and all the road wheels. Very, uh, very fine detailing on these. Considering these are in the 176 scale, they're actually really nicely detailed. You can see the detailing on the tracks there. Um, Especially on these smaller kits, sometimes they do scrimp on the detail, but these really haven't been. So like the previous set, this actually comes with a couple of weapon options. You can see we've got the different barrels here with the different muzzle brakes. We also have a option for the 75mm cannon there as well. Overall, really nice detailing and probably very, very straightforward to put together. So that's the German tanks looked at. Let's move on to the British tanks. So here we have the first of the British tanks, and this is for the Grand. And one of the things you will notice straight away is it's actually a very slightly different colour from the German tanks, which means you can pretty much assemble these and not have to worry about painting them, and you'll still be able to identify them easily on the battlefield. So the actual sprue itself, again, can, contains a few different options. You've got a few turret options here. Um, the actual main hull itself is a single piece, some nice riveting details just on the sides there. But also the tracks, again, a single piece. You don't have to worry about fiddly uh, track sections and glue those all in individually. Overall a very nice kit and a good attention to detail. So let's move on to the very final sets of sprues for the British and that's for the Crusaders. And here we have the final sprue in the set. We actually get two of these because you can build two Crusaders. And each of these sprues give you options to build either the Crusader Mark II or the Crusader Mark III. So nice, again, giving you some options on these sets. They are multi-part plastic kits. After all, it's kind of what we've come to expect from a lot of these sets. Again, a single piece hull, uh, single piece tracks, and lots of nice intricate detailing, especially on the front turret there as well. So that's all of the kits looked at. Let's get an overall summary for this starter set. So that was the Al Alamein starter set for Flames of War 4th edition. Overall, I really do like this set. There's a few pros and good points I'm going to come to in a second, but first of all, some of the cons. First of all being the box itself. I'm quite used to star sets, uh, especially recently having kind of a lift-off box lid, so everything's inside, you can kind of keep everything nicely together. This, however, just has a side flap and everything is inside there. It is a minor gripe, but it is a, just a minor annoyance that I have over the set. There's also, also a few things in here which are missing. A lot of star sets come with things like battle mats, which I've already touched on, and also things like range rulers and uh, or other measuring devices. This is actually void of those, so it is kind of relying on you to have some prior materials and prior items, but tape measures are quite easy to come by. 
Final uh, gripe is the fact that as a starter set, if you're looking to bring in new players, some of these actual kits are a, a little bit tricky to build, I think. Um, the instructions aren't super clear as to what goes where, the components aren't numbered, for example, and you do actually have to have uh, clippers, uh, scalpels or hobby knives, and also some plastic glue in order to play these. You can't just push fit them together. Uh, but it does mean, on the flip side, that if you're a, an avid model maker you actually still have that element of model making available in this kit. Another good point actually about the kits in here is if you play the Gale Force 9 game tanks you can actually use the same vehicles from this set in that game and vice versa. They're all from the same scale, all from the same manufacturer so you'll have no problem in using them between the two. Now by far the biggest pro about this set is the price point and it really does make up for the shortcomings that I've mentioned before. Its retail price is £25, which really is fantastic considering you get five tanks in here, that average out about £5 a tank, not including the rule book that you get, the quick play guide, the dice and the uh, cardboard scenery and everything else. So even though you don't get rulers and a battle mat, for 25 quid you really can't go wrong. Now if you wanted to pick one of these up for yourself, it's actually available for a little bit cheaper than that at £22.50 over on the Fysong Games web store. And I'll pop a link in the description below which will take you directly to the web store where you can pick one of these up for yourself. So to summarise, this box set really is a fantastic starting off point for Flames of War 4th Edition, be you a brand new player or an existing player. There are a few shortcomings, but it's made up for by the price point, and the detailing on these tanks really is fantastic. And there's also a bonus that you can use your, these, these tanks in Gale Force 9 tanks game as well. So if you enjoyed this unboxing, please do let us know in the comments below, and also what games you would like to see us unboxing in the future. So thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you again on Firestorm Games.